suddenly you had to worry about customers and had to worry about money and, and IPO issues and suddenly it wasn't fun. I stayed on for a while and then I said, no, this is not what I signed up for. Just a brief uh, last question. Uh, did you get any support uh, for Linux from the university and do you have likes? I, I did. And there's a Finnish saying, I don't remember the saying, but there's a Finnish saying that you, you should not stand up because you get cut down. What's the saying? I'm sure there is, because I've heard it, I've heard actual Finnish people ask me that wasn't it uncomfortable to, to stand out? Didn't people try to put you down and try to make you part of the same gray mass as everybody else? And I had absolutely the reverse experience at Helsinki University. Uh, the, it wasn't like they were There was not a lot of special support, but every, all the people were very happy about me running my experimental stuff on the university network. And, and they were really happy when we did the, I mean, as just an example, a small detail, when we did the 1.0 release in 94 or something, the university wanted to give us the like, big uh, main auditorium at the computer science auto building. And they, I mean, everybody was really nice, and and they, there was a lot of, the computer science department got an alpha-based machine because they realized that I was porting Linux to the alpha, and they thought, this is an interesting project. There was actually a lot of support, but it wasn't like official support, but in, within the uh, computer science department, I think people in general were really nice, and uh, the whole, Sure, it was odd. I mean, they everybody inside the university realized how odd it was that something practical came out of computer science. <laughs> but, but at the same time, it was it, it was like that's cool. I didn't know we could do that. So it was, it was fun. I really liked Helsinki University. I mean, I'm sure I would have liked TIFF too, but I, I had a great time at Helsinki University. Okay, the well, question over here, you will. Oh, there you have it. I'm, I'm 
if something happens, we can't do anything about it. But it's life. I wish everybody was as nice as I am. <laughs> So, I 
I tend to call myself an anti-missionary because to me, what is much more important than mission is execution. Uh, and I always quote Edison saying that genius is 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. So you do not need to have the inspiration, but in the end, uh, lots of people have ideas. It's actually finishing them and overcoming all the problems you will hit that is the sign of somebody who has a passion and really takes it all the way. Uh, that said, I, I think, you, I mean, I'm the kind of person who believes in hard work and attention to detail and just doing a lot of work. I think it's probably healthy to have a certain amount of mission too. Uh, I don't think you, in, in some cases, having vision may be what gets you past the problem. My argument has often been that if you like look at the stars all the time, you will stumble over the pothole in the ground because you're not looking where you're walking. Uh, but so just because I'm a pedestrian looking at the details kind of person, maybe those visionary people do something good too. I'm not. I, I believe more in having passion. I think really caring about what you do is way more important than than having this mental vision of this golden future that you want to reach. Yes. Uh, do you like to see events overtaking like Microsoft and Nintendo as a gaming platform? And do you expect that to happen soon? So I have to admit I don't game. I mean I I'd love for gaming platforms to be more open because gaming platforms tend to be those the most closed pieces of technology you can find almost. And I think that's kind of sad because it means that they are designed to basically exclude people from trying things out. Uh, at the same time, I understand exactly why the companies are doing this whole razor blade, sell the razor for cheap and, and get the money through the razor blades approach. I understand why they do it, so I'm not complaining too much. Uh, it would be lovely to see more open source gaming. And it is an area where people have, I mean, spent some time. And I used to believe that open source programs were all about technical things, because that's what they used to be. You used to have open source compilers and editors and operating systems and, like, geeky technical things. And I used to think, that's all we'll ever, ever do, because developers do technical things. I was wrong. I mean, there's tons of open source programs in other areas. I don't think there's a lot of open source good games. And part of that may be that games are a lot about content and really maybe need a different mindset about that. But I okay, two two more questions. <coughs> One here. How do you see the uh, future of open source and open innovation when you when you see a lot of startups coming up nowadays? And uh, how should the startups approach open source and open innovation? So I, I think if you're a startup, what you should do about open source is take advantage of it. I mean, that's really, I mean, you need that. You, you, as a startup, you need every edge you can get. And one of the edges you have is you're small and nimble, and you can take open source, and you can try to really tune it for whatever special needs you're aiming for. And I think startups especially, and, and new, really, oddball technologies that you're trying to drive that nobody has done before, that's when you should take advantage of open source and say, hey, you can build upon this base that is boring and does all the things that everybody has already done, and we'll add our special magic sauce on top and, and really take advantage of the open source model. And I think people do that, but I, I think they should maybe do it more consciously sometimes. Okay, last one. Hello, everybody. Hello, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a question for the audience. How many of you 
that performed the big Mano Nico adventure. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, all of us are born evil, but I have to protest that now I chose the ranks of NVIDIA. And now I'm streaming. I'm taking your support anyway, just to make you happy. Even though you gave me the finger. <laughs> It's amusing to see. I guarantee you, if you make that video available on the internet, there will be thousands of people who are really upset. I'm offended. I like offending people because I think the people who get offended should be offended. <laughs>